So let's move on to this identity that I was talking about called Lagrange's identity. I won't say it's an extremely important identity, but you might just get a question directly from this, right? So it's important, but like not extremely important, like a lot of topics, right? So uh, that is how the identity goes. We will actually sit and prove this, uh, but let's just have a look at it for now. You have two, four vectors. So this identity involves four vectors, A, B, C, D, right? You're taking the cross product of them, you're getting a vector. You're taking a cross product of these two, and then you're getting a vector again. Can you tell me that your end result of this expression will be, will it be a vector or a scalar? Can you tell me whether the end result of this expression is a vector or a scalar? The answer is yes, it's a scalar. Why? Because when you're taking the cross product, you're getting a vector. You're taking the cross product here, getting another vector. But for these two vectors, you're taking the dot product. So ultimately, what you'll be getting is a scalar, right? So ultimately, you're taking a scalar product of two vectors. So you'll be, you'll be getting a scalar. That scalar can be got by finding the determinant of this, right? Of this matrix. A dot C is a scalar. A dot D is a scalar. B dot C is a scalar. So let's look at the pattern here. Just observe the pattern. A is dotted with C first. Then the same A is dotted with D. So A dot C, A dot D, the positions, positions are occupied. Then B is dotted with C. And then finally your B is dotted with D. So B, C and B, D positions are occupied. So uh, the determinant of this matrix is actually going to give you the scalar that you get from this, right? Let's see how this is true. Let's actually prove this. So A cross B dot C cross D is what you have. Right. So what you can do is you can change the positions of this dot and cross that we've already seen. That's valid. So A dot B cross C cross D. You can take this and C cross D is obviously in a bracket. Right. Now this is the vector triple product part. For this what you will use the formula that we just saw. What will you do? You will take B first. Take the dot product of B with the vector which is far from B and that is D. So B dot D into C bar and from this what will you subtract? You will subtract B dot C into D bar. So this formula we have already seen. Now because dot product is distributive, this is one part, this is another part. Dot product is distributive so it will distribute between both these parts. So finally A dot B dot D uh, this is in a bracket into C bar is what you will take minus A dot B dot C into D bar is what you will take. Now remember this this B dot A is a scalar right so I can pull this scalar out B dot D, B dot D is a scalar I can pull this scalar out and I can take A dot C right. Because B and A look like vectors, but ultimately when you take the dot product, B and D look like vectors, but ultimately if you take the dot product, what you'll be getting is a scalar. I've just pulled that scalar out, right? That is something like if you do, uh, you know, A bar dot lambda C bar, what will you write this as? You will write this as lambda into A bar dot C bar, right? This lambda, imagine that lambda as B dot D here. That's what, that's all that I've done. Minus, similarly, you'll do the same thing here. You'll pull the scalar out and then you will write a dot d here. Now this is something like ac minus bd and ac minus bd is basically the de determinant of this matrix right ac minus bd. So a is your this part b dot a dot c. So I have taken a dot c here and then uh, because a dot c is multiplied with b dot d so I will take b dot d here right so this is that's how basically what I'm trying to tell you is this this thing that you see here this expression the final expression that you see here can be written in the form of this determinant so this and this determinant are the same thing right so that arrangement that sort of pattern you create in your head by yourself as to how how you will relate to this and this one thing is for sure when you expand this determinant you will be you will be able to see this but from this, you should always know how to write this. And that's a pattern that you actually have to set it in your head. So imagine this as AC minus BD and relate it to ABCD, right? 
so that's how that's how you can actually relate so with this i have proven lagrange's identity sometimes you can get a question directly based on this not always so that's why i'm not calling it extremely important but sometimes uh, you might get a question uh, on this so let's look at uh, the last sub topic under vector triple product and that is where does this a cross b cross c lie in fact where does this where does this vector lie that is what we will see we will see where does this vector a cross b uh, cross c cross d lie so once we know where this vector lies the the understanding that we will develop from this we can use that to you know answer other questions other, where, where other where for example a cross b cross c where will this lie we can answer a lot of things once we actually understand this so let's move on to understanding where this vector will lie with respect to a b c d